To mark the channel surpassing the 1 million subscriber milestone, I thought it would be fun to take a look at all the places in Middle Earth where we could share a celebratory pint or song. So today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the inns and pubs of Middle Earth. While unsurprisingly we will spend most of our time in the Shire today, we will first look to the realm of men. There is a very brief mention of an inn within the city of Minas Tirith in the pages of The Return of the King. Baragon tells Pippin that should he like a merry guide about the city, seek his son Bergil at the old guest house in the Rath Kellerdine. The Rath Kellerdine, or Lamprite Street, was located on the lowest tier of Minas Tirith. Pippin makes for the street named for the fabricators of the city's lamps, finding the inn and a unique sight. He came at last by the arched streets and many fair alleys and pavements to the lowest and widest circle, and there he was directed to the Lamprite Street, a broad way running toward the Great Gate. In it he found the old guest house, a large building of grey weathered stone with two wings running back from the street and between them a narrow greensward, behind which was the many-windowed house, fronted along its whole width by a pillared porch and a flight of steps down onto the grass. Boys were playing among the pillars, the only children that Pippin had seen in Minas Tirith. While no doubt there are many other inns and pubs to be found not only in Minas Tirith, but throughout Gondor, Rohan, Dale, Erebor, or other civilizations, the remaining eight named locations are, perhaps fittingly, either within or near the Shire. One of the most well-known inns throughout the Middle-earth tales is of course the Prancing Pony in Bree. The village of Bree was an important location not for any historical or political reason, but simply because it lied at the crossroads of the Great East Road, which ran from the Grey Havens to Rivendell, connecting to paths leading beyond to places like Erebor and the Greenway, the road that once ran from the Arnorian city of Farnost in the north all the way to Minas Tirith in the south. The Prancing Pony was run by the Butterbur family for years beyond reckoning, and even though the northern realm of Arnor would fall, the Prancing Pony remained a popular gathering place for men, hobbits, and dwarves, and would see many notable events occur within its walls. In 2670 of the Third Age, Tobold Hornblower was a hobbit of the Shire who visited Bree and very likely the Prancing Pony. It was from Bree that he acquired samples of a plant which he would go on to grow in the south farthing of the Shire, giving birth to Old Toby. It is also possible that the Prancing Pony was the meeting place of Gandalf the Grey and Thorin Oakenshield, a meeting that would lead to the quest of Erebor. While we are not explicitly told in the published Hobbit, it's also possible that Bilbo and the Dwarves of Thorin's company may have stayed in the Prancing Pony on their way to Rivendell. Indeed, when Tolkien began a complete rewrite of the Hobbit in 1960 to make it more similar in scale to the Lord of the Rings, he specifically mentions the company having their last comfortable night for many days to come in the Prancing Pony. In September 3018, Frodo and his fellow hobbits would arrive at the Prancing Pony also while en route to Rivendell. There they would meet the forgetful proprietor, Barloman Butterbur, as well as two of his hobbit employees, Bob and Nob. The hobbits would drink, sing, and stay in the Prancing Pony, and after a fateful meeting with Strider and a close call with the Nazgul, would continue on their great adventure. Over a year later, in October 3019, Gandalf and the hobbits would return to stay in the Prancing Pony once more. Barloman is dismayed to learn that the Ranger Strider is now the High King of the reunited kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor. For his part, the barkeep would update the travelers on the troubles of Bree over the previous year. Yet joyfully, he would reveal to Samwise that Bill the Pony had returned safely to Bree. But there is another inn mentioned within the borders of Breeland known as the Forsaken Inn. We don't know anything about its history, only that it lies a day's journey east of Bree, and that it was likely abandoned by 2941 when Bilbo goes on his adventure. The company comes across a deserted building where they make camp, 
Indeed, this is once again something Tolkien brought up in his abandoned 1960 expansion of The Hobbit. It is here where they find the last inn, which is deserted. It is said they make camp there on May 3rd, 2941, after traveling just 20 miles that day, being too depressed to travel further. This forsaken inn serves as both a mysterious and eerie location but also a sign of the desolation that had grown in the world east of Bree. Turning now to the west of Bree, we find the remaining six named inns located within the Shire. While some would have a long history and feature heavily in the tales of Middle-earth, others are only briefly mentioned. One such inn is the All Welcome Inn, which lies just west of Frogmorton, where the North Way meets the Great East Road. It is also mentioned in the 1960 rewrite of The Hobbit, meant to be one of the stops of Thorin's company. Nearby, we find the Floating Log, located within the village of Frogmorton itself. Also situated on the East Road, this inn was close to the midway point between Hobbiton and the Brandywine River. It is only mentioned in the closing chapters of The Return of the King, where it is revealed that when Saruman and his ruffians took over the Shire, they shut down the inn. Presumably, it would be reopened in the Days of Restoration after Sharky and his men are overthrown. Also lying within the Shire's east farthing is an inn called the Golden Perch. Rather than referencing a stand where a bird might rest, the Golden Perch refers to the type of fish. Pippin mentions the Golden Perch during the chapter A Shortcut to Mushrooms, saying that it has the best beer in the east farthing. Despite Pippin's wish to make their way to the inn, Frodo replies saying that shortcuts make delays but inns make longer ones, and resolves to keep Pippin away from the Golden Perch at all costs. Fittingly, this pub, named for a type of fish, is mentioned in Hammond and Skull's Reader's Companion as a likely favorite of local anglers of the area. On the west side of the Brandywine Bridge, we find the Bridge Inn. While the earlier floating log was only shut down by Sharky's men, the Bridge Inn would be destroyed completely. It is torn down by the ruffians and replaced with a guardhouse. And it is here where Frodo, Sam, Mary, and Pippin are declared under arrest by the Shire Sheriffs. It is unknown whether the Bridge Inn would be rebuilt in the restoration of the days to come. Our next inn is found on Bywater Road and known as the Ivy Bush. We find it mentioned in the Fellowship of the Ring as a favorite watering hole of Hamfast Gamgee, Sam's dad. It is here that the old gaffer spoke with other hobbits such as Ted Sandyman and Daddy Twofoot about Bilbo and Frodo Baggins and the rumored treasure of Bag End. In the real world, it is believed that Tolkien named this fictional ivy bush after a very real establishment in Birmingham, England. Finally, we have the most well-known of inns in the Shire, the Green Dragon. Located in Bywater, it's the nearest establishment to Hobbiton, one mile southeast from the bridge leading to Bag End. This would lead it to be a popular location for hobbits of both Bywater and Hobbiton. In 2941, the Green Dragon is the starting point of the quest of Erebor. When Bilbo arrives, he finds the dwarves packed and ready to depart. We next see the Green Dragon in the Fellowship of the Ring. Samwise reveals that like his father at the Ivy Bush, he had been engaged in a good amount of gossip in the establishment. It is here that Sam would talk about the mysterious tree men seen on the North Moors by his cousin Halfast. Once again, we find Ted Sandyman in this scene, though here we find him mocking Sam's tale. The Green Dragon would, like the others, find trouble in the days of Sharky's reign. When, on November 2nd, 3019, the four hobbits arrive in Bywater, they see the green dragon is closed. It's called lifeless, with broken windows, with half a dozen ruffians lounging against the inn wall. After the men insult Frodo, the hobbits drive the men away. And after reclaiming the Shire, no doubt this pinnacle of Perinath pubs was restored, ringing in many future days of hobbits drinking and singing merrily in their beloved green dragon, one of the great inns of Middle-earth. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, CCDC Red Team, Joe Tepper, The Mighty Mim, 
Andrew Carlisle, Leo Vittori, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Berto Berg, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Micah Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description to purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.